Welcome everyone to a replay cast here. We have a cycle one of the Paradise League tournament match here where we are in the loser bracket round of three here, a best of three series between Doghouse on the Legion side and D's Nuts on the Hellborn side. This is game two now of the series where D's Nuts is actually leaning one game to nothing here over Doghouse. So these nuts looking to clinch, uh, clinch the series here with a 2-0 sweep, and Doghouse looking to keep the series alive and force a third game. Following that one up, <clears throat> so let's see what Doghouse responds here in game number two to that game one loss. As we have the bands yes. underway, we have Tremble, Lodestone, and Moira coming out from our Hellborn side here. So we see the Tremble band. That one is always a far targeted respect band. Then we have Lodestone and Moira, just some very solid uh, hero picks across the board. We have Engineer, Electrician, and Corrupted Disciple going to be banned out here from the side of Doghouse. So the bands are kind of all over the place. We have some solo heroes, some carries, some supports, a little bit of everything. Looks like they're talking about pings. I do believe this will be a uh us east server as uh it is west versus eu team so they are playing on uh east us east so that will favor the na team slightly if we take a look at the the pings i think they're like does that even work maybe you cannot check pings ping all in replay uh <coughs> i don't i don't know actually but anyway enough about the pings and the servers let's talk about the game we have, uh, I believe it was a first pick, Magmus coming out from the side of Hellborn. And then we had Moraxis and Galatius coming out from Doghouse. These nuts picks up Kraken and Nymphora. So they have uh, a core Kraken, and then either a core Magmus on the other lane and a support Nymphora, or two supports picked up so far. And then on the side of Doghouse, we have a Moraxis. A little bit surprised by the Moraxis pick. It's not really countering anything yet. There's no... The only projectile is the Kraken Torrent, but that's not really a big spell that you want to be blocking. So they're more or less just picking up the Moraxis as like a, a hero to stick in a solo lane or whatnot. And then the Glacius is just a strong support going up against the Magmus and the Kraken to immobilize them. They can't use their spells for a short duration. Well, the Glacius pick is quite good. Uh, I see a lot of teamfight presence with the Nymphor and the Magnus already. They throw a Kraken on top of that. That's some great teamfight presence. But it looks like both sides are going to be needing some core heroes. We're going to see some core heroes getting banned out from both teams. We have Oogie, Dr. Repulsor, and Defiler banned from Doghouse. So they actually go ahead and ban the Dr. Repulsor, which is a hero that they are well known for running. So a little bit surprised there from Snooki, but maybe he... Uh, does not want to face the Nymphora Doctor combination. Maybe they were not looking to pick up the Doctor this game. Then we have Sir Benzington, Gemini, and Valkyrie banned from the side of these nuts. So these look like tri lane style of carries or farmers. The Gemini as well could be ran in a tri lane, but the Benzington and the Valkyrie most definitely tri lane or solo lane style of heroes. So doesn't want to face those. And then we have the first two picks of the second wave from Doghouse going to be Gladiator and Monarch. So a very strong combination of two heroes, very defensive uh, with the Call to Arms and the Chrysalis, but also still being able to be aggressive simultaneously, look for kills as they have early game disables and, and fighting abilities. So a little bit more, I would say, of a defensive lineup coming out from the side of Doghouse. And before we talk about the last two picks from D's Nuts, they throw a Moon Queen on top of that so perhaps they were setting up for this style of lineup all along as they do kind of pick up uh like a defensive solo lane hero in the moraxis he's very tanky able to go off on his own so i i am thinking that this will be a tri lane here with monarch glacius and moon queen defensive tri lane maybe to protect the moon queen gladiator in mid they're going to give fa the gladiator i'm a little bit surprised that they're not putting fa on the moon queen and Zniki on the Gladiator. Zniki is pretty known for playing Gladiator in the mid lane. But uh, I'm expecting this to be a defensive tri lane with the Moon Queen because they have kind of the tools to play defensively with the Monarch. And then Morax is uh, very hard to deal with in the off lane. Uh, and then Gladiator as well for later in the game with the Call to Arms. 
Um, so they're banking a lot on this Moon Queen. It looks like they're going to just get Zanuki farmed up and hope that he can do the job. But uh, the last two picks coming out from these nuts was actually Elonia and Silhouette. Silhouette into Elonia, technically, but they were picked at the same time. So they pick up the Elonia, which they ran in game number one. A very good flash farming, split pushing, damage dealing kind of mid hero. And then they have the Silhouette against <laughs> the Moon Queen, which uh, the Moon Queen was actually the final pick of the game. So. They did not see the Moon Queen pick just yet, but they do go with a Silhouette in their tri-lane. They're going to run an offensive tri-lane with Silhouette against the Moon Queen tri-lane. I would say both these tri-lanes are a little bit more on the defensive side. Um, you have triple range, sort of, with Moon Queen being a ranged hero, but two, two range against one melee here. Got Magmus with the boots. Silhouette in a tri-lane is not really the most threatening, but neither is Moon Queen. She has a Moonbeam, but it costs a lot of mana. It's, I think, 120 mana at all levels. It does a mini stun, 75 damage. You can use it twice, but it's not really, like, the most scary. Um, and he's probably going to be wanting to max the Moonbeam or level it up if they're going to be fighting a lot in the tri-lane versus maxing out the multi-strike going for the jungle stacks. Don't I don't think with facing a tri-lane that they'll be able to kind of do the more passive route. Top lane, we have Kraken versus Moraxis. Um, I would say this is a pretty even lane. I think Kraken has a slight edge early. Moraxis <laughs> picks up around level 5. Excuse me, guys. I just woke up. <laughs> I'm going to do my best to not be choking up a storm here. Then we have Gladiator versus Alonia. I think this is maybe like an okay matchup for both sides. Alonia should do okay early on with the harassment with spells. And the Gladiator, once he gets level 3, 5, he'll just start to whip the Alonia. Slowly beat her down. We have Glacius doing some jungling. He's going to kill the hard creep there. And they will realize that they're against a the Trilane. So I think he's going to buy... Maybe he bought a bottle or something. I'm not sure. He probably bought something to uh, be in the lane now. We see Magmus doing a pull. So they're going to get lane control here. And Flora is going to get caught. They're going to do a lot of damage here. There's the Golden Apple. Zeal Stun comes out. Nefora goes down. But they trade the Moon Queen. They trade the Moon Queen. Now, they did get the Bloodlust on the Monarch. So, I think it's probably fine that they traded the Moon Queen. I mean, it's not good that Moon Queen died. But they got the Bloodlust. And that's a big gold uh, advantage. They're going on Magmus now. A lot of damage already. Magmus goes down as well. So... Apparently, with the double immobilized from Monarch and Glacius, that is enough for them to bring these supports down before they can get their spells off in a comfortable fashion. Magnus was not even able to lava surge there, so just so much damage between the Monarch and the uh, the Glacius with the two immobilizes. And these spells deal a lot of damage in early levels. We have the Monarch dealing 100 damage, the Glacius dealing uh, like 100 plus damage. So, on top of that, they're not able to use their spells. Now, Silhouette, she's also taking heavy pressure. And apparently, this Moon Queen Trilane is uh, packing a punch here. Now, they're going to turn their attention on the Nymphora, and Nymphora's going to fall. Magnus and Silhouette want to go back in, but Silhouette's really low, and I don't know. There's a creep wave here, so there's a uh, Death Lotus coming in, hitting onto the Glacius. That was a very nice Death Lotus from the Silhouette. I love to see that coming in so even on low life they were able to make something happen there and get a return kill very very good for them as they were not doing very well down here so moon queen she's not really farming the best silhouette is 12 and 2 so little red panda here is definitely doing well on the creep score but moon queen with the 1 1 and 2 score She's on 250 GP. I'm not doing that bad here uh, early on. Top lane, Kraken versus Moraxis. We have 13 and 1 against 17 and 3. So Kraken, he's pushing the wave with the splash. Getting those last hits. He's on 20 creep kills already. So Rosaru is doing really well up there in the top lane. We saw him do well in the 2 versus 1 uh, in the previous game where he also played the Kraken. Mid lane, we have a 15 and 3 Elonia versus a 18 and 5 Gladiator. So, Fa proving that the ping does not impact him too much. He is playing fantastically here in the laning stage for now. 20 and 6 now, so he is winning the creep score over Angry Testy. But still fairly close. 
Um, early on, a small gold lead for Legion, but nothing really too crazy just yet. So the action of the Tritlane has actually kind of slowed down a little bit. And I, I'm not sure who that favors per se. Magmus is going to do a defensive stun. I, I think they just camped the bottom rune for Elodia. He got an illusion rune. That is a very strong rune for Elodia to have. She's going to have like almost nothing on her cooldowns. They're like going to be like one, one or two seconds, even at the high levels. He continues to max the glacial spike, which I don't, I don't like uh, him maxing the that over the frigid field on Elodia. Gladiator's gonna put a lot of pressure here. He whips down the illusions. Top lane. Oh, here comes the spell arrest from Elonia. But Faz already got a health potion, so he's kind of prepared for this as he hits level six now. Legion Trilane playing very aggressively here. <coughs> Snicky tanked a tower hit there. There comes a freeze. On oh, the Magmus, but the Nymphora heal comes out. Magmus looking for a target. He's going to find Glacius. There's the crystals coming in. Moonbeam on the Magmus as he uses the Steam Bath. Tree Grapple forward, and there's going to be some good pressure coming in on the Glacius. She falls, and now Monarch is out of mana. Does have a Chalice, but I don't think he wants to use it to go low life. Magmus has another stun soon, but there's the Death Lotus Snipe. A level 2 Lotus connecting on the Moon Queen, and now Monarch is in trouble. He uses the Chalice. He's going for the turn kill. Will he get it? It is so close, but dude will not get the turn kill as he was... Uh, as the monarch, or sorry, the Nymphora survived on 40 life. So it was a double tap for the Magmus. Silhouette picked up the kill on the Moon Queen. So the Hellborn Trilane starting to come in big here. As now Silhouette has Ghost Marchers picked up here five minutes in. Compare that to the Moon Queen who's still on red boots and a power supply. We got a lot of action here already in game two. We're at eight kills under six minutes in. As we're going to see them go for the two runes here. Kraken's going to take the top rune, looks like, or maybe just look to use a Veiled Rot. Lonnie's going to go for the bottom rune. Magnus going to see if any follow-up happens here. Kraken finds himself in invisibility. So this could be a kill on the Gladiator. He's going to pop his Veiled Rot, but he's still invisible. Gladiator has no idea that this rune just got taken. So he might just walk back to middle. And Kraken's going to stalk him. And Magmus is also here in the area. So we see Silhouette playing defensively for the time being. But this could very well be a kill on the Gladiator. He is got... Oh, he's even going to get his Ward of Sight spotted out. Oh, no. Here comes the release of Kraken following the Lava Surge. And Ba is going to go down. And on top of that, they saw him ward. That is going to add insult to injury down uh, over there in the mid lane. We now have a 6-3 to three lead here for these nuts as Kraken, Silhouette, and Alonia all sporting above 300 GPM early on. Glacia throws out a Thunder Blast, but here comes Magmus as the Zeal Stun from Nephora connects. We have the Chrysalis preventing a lot of damage, but a two-man line stun coming out from the Magmus catches the Monarch as well. Silhouette grappling forward, and now, dude, he's in some trouble. They're going to spot him in the trees here, and both supports are going to fall again. And Snooki, he just can't do a whole lot on the Moon Queen as he he can throw out a Moonbeam, but it's, it's not going to be really enough pressure to get a return kill. Silhouette uses the Lotus here. We see Gladiator coming in for a gank bottom, but... And maybe they had an idea that this was going on. Maybe they got a missing call from mid. See a ward already in the jungle. They see the stacks. But these nuts is playing this game too very well so far. Minus the early, early couple of minutes in that tri lane. And Kraken, he continues to be over 100 GPM above the Maraxes. He's on 55 creeps compared to 39. See, bottom rune goes to Elonia, and Kraken takes haste. So, Doghouse has not really found themselves any runes this game. See, Elonia finding Glacius, Magmus, they take him out. See, just got that Ward of Sight down. The mana comes in from Nymphora. They're going to look to pressure this tower now, it looks like it's Elonia. She's moving in to steal the stacks. Still only has the level 1 in the Frigid Field, which, again, not... Not really the best. Kraken has a haste rune, which we we saw him pick up at the eight minute mark. He activates it here with the veiled rot. He's looking he's looking for somebody, but Moon Queen is already ported to the top lane. 
Realizing she cannot be down here in the bottom lane. There's just too much aggression coming out from the side of these nuts. <coughs> and they steal all of the stacks. The, the middle camps, the easy camp. It's a big gold swing now for Hellborn as we have a 4,700 gold lead and a 3,000 experience lead. Glacius continuing to jungle some hard camps to try to get some gold maybe. Work toward his boots. Infora is going to hit the zeal stun here, but the call to arms pulls Infora back. She goes down. She gets caught there. We have Sackstone picked up on the silhouette as he's got the life tube. Maybe going for the null stone this game. Very good against the gladiator. Silhouette ports up to the top lane with Magmus. They want to catch this moon queen. Now she has a moon finale, but eruption not going to connect for some damage but there's a death lotus and moon queen's gonna go down there's no protection for him up there and snooki falls for the third time this game drops down to 290 gpm and magmus picked up the kill he's on an onslaught streak 260 gold per minute now maraxis it's got striders doesn't He's going for the early portal key. He wants to get that as soon as possible to help make some space for the Moon Queen. Kraken, he went for a lot of buildup in uh, in response. He's got Steam Boots Bottle. He needs about 900 gold for his portal key. The fall will connect here. Some pressure coming in. There's a showdown. Just some pressure. Baits out a TP and the Nymph TP as well. Supporting Silhouette into the mid lane. But it's a very, very defensive nymph for it, so I think Silhouette's just going to go back to top lane. We got Sackstone picked up on the Alonia. Gladiator goes for Ghost Marcher. He's kind of like the one guy doing well for Legion. Uh, always seems to find his farm. He's on 67 last hits. 370 gold per minute, oh, almost. We have Maraxxus with the PK, he's Veiled Rotted. We'll see what they try to do with this. Maybe they want to set up a kill on the Alonia. And he is running his way toward mid lane. This could very well be a kill if Alonia stays here. The Pitfall comes in, it's going to land on the Alonia. Here comes the Quake Stun. And the Call to Arms also connecting. This should be a dead Alonia, and it will be. Uh, meanwhile, we got Silhouette trying to split push the top lane. Magmus. Farming the bottom lane. I like that he's pushing this out. He's not static farming it. And he is a little under halfway to his portal key. Now with the tower going down to the creeps, he's got 1200 gold. So that tower gives Kraken just enough gold for his blink. He's got it sending out right now. And then Magmus, he's kind of split pushing the bottom lane, causing some, some pressure. They're going to try to go for him here. He might get caught. He goes for the TP. Oh, there's the dust. Magmus is going to die here. Very good dust from dude, recognizing that they might need that, and they will set up the killer on the Magmus. Now he didn't really lose too much gold, but he gave 500 gold over to dude, and dude's gonna be really happy to get that 500 gold because now he's gonna have marchers. He was lacking those for quite a while, so even though Moon Queen didn't get the kill, dude is gonna be pretty happy. He's got some Striders now, move around the map a little bit faster, but we have. Alonia and Kraken running into the Monarch. They decide that they're not going to go for a play. They did have Nymphora TP up if they wanted to take a team fight down there. <clears throat> Silhouette has 1600 gold. Looks like she will be going straight into the Null Stone. The Queen's got her Whispering Helm now. She's still very far behind the Silhouette, about 200 GPM behind. Take a look at XPM, Hero Damage. Everyone is fairly even on Hero Damage. It's a pretty, pretty even game despite the 4,000 lead for Gold Lead for uh, Hellborn. Inside Massacre gets activated. Here comes the Call to Arms from Gladiator catching Alonia. But release the Kraken, locks down Moraxis. He's gonna get Magma stunned in the tower. He's gonna go down. Monarch throws out a slow and a immobilized, but 
It's not enough return pressure. They just don't really have enough bursting power here early on. Are they going to look to pressure this tier 1 tower now with the kill on Moraxis? The call to arms was already used as well. Killout uses the shadow here. Nice pitfall coming in from the Gladiator, but there's a swap from Silhouette avoiding the Crippling Pollen. Very nice swap. Just disjoints the spell there. He'll go back to farming. He picks up the Blessed Orb, so he's almost got the Null Stone. We have Magmus farming in the top lane. I like that they're putting Magmus in a lane because he's very close to Blink and Silhouette can jungle with the Nymphora. So... <clears throat> this will give Magmus a little bit more space. They might try to set up a gank on Magmus before he gets his Blink. I see Maraxis was running up there. Not sure what he's buying with the Major Totem. Sackstone maybe? Energizer? I'm not sure. Feels a little little funky there to go for a major totem on the on the Maraxis. The Moon Queen, she's got her quick blade, she's going into the firebrand. She'll have that relatively soon. Silhouette just got her nullstone finished, it's being delivered. No, oh, they're waiting on the Magmus PK. They they have a lot of core items, nothing really big on the Alonia. At least the Kraken catches Galatius. Oh no, Magmus was trying to go for the Moraxis, but he blinked in. And Kraken might die here. The team support's coming in from Doghouse. As the Nymph Pod does come out, does heal Kraken for a little bit of damage. But here comes the Moon Finale, dealing some good damage. It does bounce to the creeps a little bit. That is only a level 1. As Magmus now has the PK, he jumps in with the Eruption. He's going to line up a 2-man stun, but Gladiator is tanky with the Shaman Cedrus and the debuffs. <coughs> Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Alonia... They got the tower. He's not even interested in joining this fight. Nymphora goes down. <clears throat> and Silhouette is going to be fine, it looks like. I think they only killed the Glacius. Uh, it looks like they only killed the Glacius in this fight, and they lost the Kraken and the Nymphora. So, what they got out of that in exchange was the mid tier 1 tower. Elonio was split pushing that. And he does go for the Gnome's Wisdom, it looks like. He's going fairly defensive here with the Sackstone and the Gnomes, once the healing. He's got an Illusion Rune, what's going on here? They're going for the Ancients, looks like. I think we should have her Firebrand, I think, being sent out. I think she should have enough gold. So he's almost up to 400 gold per minute. It's not looking too, too bad. And Moon Queen is a hero that the longer you give him in time, the more likely he is to just take over the game. So Hellborn does have to be careful that they don't kind of let the game go too, too long for the Moon Queen. But at the same time, they have great farm on the majority of their heroes. Monarch's going to get caught here. He goes down. Kraken is currently spotting... Oh, I think he saw the Moon Queen! Oh, he cannot get an angle for the Tsunami charge, though. But they're gonna steal the stacks, at the least. Gladiator has his smoke broken here. We have Alonia in the area as well. All two arms is going to be coming out here following the showdown. The pitfall caught him initially. Magma takes a lot of damage. Can I get the lava surf? Actually, he used it on the creeps. They're going to get the counter kill here on the Galatius in the release of Kraken. Where Axis goes down to the silhouette. Big damage coming in from silhouette with those right clicks. And now Monarch, she's getting slowed up by the Alonia silhouette. He's thinking about going back in. He's got a tree grapple. Maybe he wants to go in the back line for the gladiator as there is going to be a hatcher coming out for silhouette could this be a quad kill as Fa is in a world of trouble here the tree grapple does stun him up but the pitfall connects it there is the quad kill coming out for red little panda there on the silhouette and now he picks up the portal key as well and the only one to survive this fight was moon queen moon queen i don't even think was present for the fight she's trying to work towards her next item but silhouette is almost up to 600 gold per minute now 
Oh, this is starting to get very scary for Doghouse. The lead is going to be about 10,000 gold after this tower falls. It's going to jump up here to 10,000 gold and 5,800 experience. The moon, they see the Moon Queen farming here in the mid lane. See if they maybe try to go for him. <clears throat> Silhouette did port to the top lane. She's got her shadow up pretty soon if she wants to use that to rejoin the party. They're going for a kill here on the Alonia. Two men licensed from the Magmus onto both Maraxis and Moon Queen. Alonia's holding her ground for now with the heals, but she will fall. Now they do bring down the Moon Queen while this is going on. And Moraxis, I don't know, he might get caught here. There's the release of Kraken kind of pulling him in. Two men stun onto the Monarch as well there. And the Moraxis goes down. And they are not done chasing. Kraken with a big auto attack splash takes out Glacius. And Monarch could go down as well. Here comes a Pitfall only landing on the Kraken. And Monarch is going to get stunned down from both the Nymphora and the Magmus. Call to Arms pulls back the Kraken, but there's no damage. There is no damage to bring these heroes down. And Fa, he's doing his best. To try to get a return kill, but he's just getting chain stunned down by the Nymphora and the Magnus and the Kraken. And while this was all going on, Silhouette was pushing the top lane. The Silhouette takes out the tier 2 tower top, and it is a 14,000 gold and 10,000 experience lead. Here at 20 minutes. This is a massive lead. The second support, Magnus. Already up to 370 gold per minute. That's nearly tied with the Moon Queen, the top farmer of Legion. Almost everyone is 400 GPM or higher. And then you have the Nymphora on 200. Well, Maraxis does go for an Energizer. A little, little bit of an interesting pick up there. I don't really like it per se. I think I would have rather him bulked up uh, with like vestments and maybe a sack stone or a power supply. Hangless is gonna get caught here. He gets storm spirited. Who's storm? Oh he has his own storm spirit. Wow. Kraken's getting locked down. He's gonna go down. They do not have Alonia. She is currently running through the Hellborn jungle. Coming in for the flank. Magnus goes in with a triple stun on the Moon Queen. Gladiator and Galatius. Absolute Zero comes out, takes out the Galatius Magnus trying to juke the axes, but he will go down. And now Alonia, she's trying to chase the Moraxis. Arcane Shield, that ain't gonna help you, buddy. These are AoE slows coming out from the Alonia. Final auto attack takes him out. It is a bloodbath for the silhouette, meanwhile, as he took out the Gladiator. And he is now 10 and 0, almost 700 GPM. So it looks like another fight where only Snooki survives on the Moon Queen. And Silhouette's very close to having her shrunken head finished. So put some pressure here on the tower. I think Moon Queen is going for the Shrunken. I, I I don't feel like he can go for the Geo Bane this game. There's just too much AoE stuns and magic damage. Nice tree grapple following up the Magma stun there. So it has her Shrunken finish. She's going to use it here. Fighting the Moon Queen. Mono -y -mono. She's going to stun her up. And Moon Queen is going to fall. It's a double tap bloodbath coming out for Silhouette. He is in the middle of the fight. Another stun from the Magmus comes out, and they are cleaning up Doghouse. It's a full genocide, and the GGs are called. We have a 20,000 gold and 17,000 experience lead here at 20, almost 23 minutes. So, D's Nuts capitalizes again here in game number two. And this one was piloted behind a 700 GPM Trilane Silhouette. So, very well executed draft here. And game number two coming out from D's Nuts. They will take the series and they will move on here in the loser bracket uh, of cycle number one.